first time I was here was uh, on the Cole Brothers Circus in 1942. Uh, we traveled in 42 with the show. The modern day owner of the world's largest circus under the Big Top was only four years old when he came to the United States. Johnny Pugh's father, British empresario Digger Pugh, was best known for providing all-female performing troops on European and American circuses. Because his dad was constantly on the move, little Johnny learned mostly by doing, as his Austrian-born wife pointed out many years later. Always on tour with his family, John escaped the confines of formal education, spending no more than six weeks a year in a classroom. The knowledge and skill John acquired along the way were self-taught, gained through observation, curiosity, practice, and a will to succeed at whatever he attempted. So John got a lot of uh, uh, basic training from his dad. His dad was very tough on him and taught him a lot about the business. Mr. Pugh came over here and, and joined this show as well as Mills Brothers and performed his trampoline act with different shows over here and he'd worked all over Europe. I've worked all my life. I don't ever remember being a kid. I just, I worked from one day forward with my father said to me, you know, yeah, you need to do this. And I'd stop and do something. He said, well, I'm going to go with my friends. He said, well, why would you go there? You know, you're going to do some work or do something. And uh, when I was a performer, those three years with my partner were the greatest three years of my life. He was a tremendous acrobat as a youngster. He had a young partner and they performed an acrobatic act that was unparalleled. They worked in all of the greatest music halls throughout Europe. He performed five command performances before the royal family of England. John Pugh also learned a valuable lesson early in his career on the trampoline with his partner Neil Eagles, that pleasing the audience often trumps the act itself. One time we had a job in a nightclub. Uh, my father got it to us. It was only supposed to be two weeks. It was a nightclub and we couldn't do the full act. It was a low ceiling and, and everything like this. And we pr practically missed every trick because the lighting was bad. The floor was slippery and, and we fell and went over the, over the, we into the bandstand and everything like that. And in fact, that night, we just packed up everything and, 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 and went home. So my dad, when I got up in the next morning, says to me, he says, well, how did it go last night? And I said, oh, dad, I, we missed this trick. I couldn't do that. The, the ceiling was dark. I had no place to spot on. Neil slipped as he was catching me and we did this. And he said, well, what did I forget the day, owner of the club? He said, but what did he say? Oh, we didn't even see him. We just left, you know. So my dad, this was a friend of my dad. So my dad rang, him, rang the guy up and he says, you couple of stupid buggers. I said, he said, what do you mean? He said, he said, that guy thought you were the best thing he ever seen. And he couldn't believe that you'd quit, you know. And so we went back, you know, and, and, and we were only booked in there for two weeks because we had our summer season coming up at the opera, uh, the, uh, Opera House in Bridlington, I think it was, and uh, for the summer, and uh, we just he, we actually stayed there for six weeks. And the guy they threw a party for us at the end, and he said it's the best act he ever ever had. Never had an act like that. And we were still missing tricks, all going up, falling into tables. But you and Neil, 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 no, yeah, and he just he just thought we were great. My dad said to me, he said. He said, you silly buggers, he said, you're making more money a week there than you ever made in your life, and you were gonna walk away from it. He said, don't you know that, how many acrobats do you think are in the audience? In the early 1960s, after suffering an injury on Coal Brothers, John accepted an offer to become a manager on the circus. Ready to go, I was in London back at the house, and I was just getting ready, the, the limo had turned up for me, and uh, my dad rang me and I said, oh, he's gonna congratulate me, or say thank you, you do a good job, and he said to me, he said, don't forget to buy a return ticket. And I did, I bought a return ticket, because I never did anything, my dad always told me I did whatever he told me, and I came over here, and I can tell you that 
I was ready to go home the first six weeks. I hated it. And, uh, you know, and everybody says, oh, that, that limey, that kinker, you know, you yeah. know, you weren't part of the, sh you were, what do you mean he's an assistant manager? And uh, so, but I stuck it out because I always said to myself, I can just see myself getting off the plane and my dad would say, I told you so. And I stuck it out to the end of the year and, and that was it. John Pugh was general manager of the show in late 1981 when its owner put the circus up for sale. Unable to find a suitable buyer, the millionaire decided to donate the circus to Florida State and write it off on his taxes. Pugh bought the show and, with a new partner, embarked on the 1982 tour. The first year out, we managed to pay off the debts. There was a 750000 bad debt against the show, which unfortunately we, and that's another story, how we inherited that debt, because we weren't supposed to inherit any debts, but they were bad debts against us, so we had that to pay off. So basically the show came in probably with about 35000 in the till. And you know, we're not gonna survive the winter like that. Uh, so basically I sold everything that wasn't nailed down, that was loose, and it was just to keep the show just to keep the show going and uh, we had a hard time getting it and one day a guy came by and said to us, uh, said to me, he said, do you want to sell those palm trees? Uh, they had the most beautiful palm trees in winter quarters. And I said, uh, well, there'd be a lot of trouble to get up. He said, no, 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 I'll buy them from you and I'll take them out. And I said, well, why would you want them when it's some island palm that was in there, which is a very beautiful palm. And there was, there was maybe a hundred, a couple of hundred of them in there. Well, what happened is that Disney World was building at that time and they wanted those palms because those palms had survived the cold up where we are. They're really a southern type palm. And this guy bought them all and he, I got $500 a piece from him. And you know, the thing about it is that we didn't even own the winter quarters in those days. So it was kind of a, you know, and, I, and that's how I got the show all but out. But the circus still found itself short of funds. What happened is I contacted Dory Miller of Carson and Barnes, a good friend and great showman, and um, I said, Dory, would you like to buy two of our elephants? And uh, he said, well, I said, I'd probably like to buy them back from you at the end of the season if everything goes well, but I need money, and because what we, what we were short was 50 grand for the down payment on the insurance. And so I got my 50 grand out of selling those two elephants, and that's how we went out the gate, and let me tell you, we went out of the gate and did nothing but hit home runs all year. It's no wonder then that a man who owes his lifeblood to the circus remains energetically focused on its future with all his dreams, all his thoughts, and all his soul. I love it. I just love it. I love, you know, I've had some good days, bad days, things go wrong, and the days I wanted to shoot myself, but on the whole, I say to myself, you know, wow, this is, you know, where did that 50 something years I've done on this show alone go to? I mean, it's, it's, it's like this season, here we are almost in July, and I'm saying to myself, wow, where did this first, first half of the season go? We've almost done 15 weeks, and it's gone, and it was like yesterday. The secret of my success if you want to call it a success. Heaven in the Circus, maybe it isn't, but, but it is a success as far as I'm concerned. The secret of my success is having good people to help me. And I don't care who this person is, whether it's a guy that's driving the stakes, a guy that's driving a truck, the star of the show, you need every one of those people. And it's, 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 it's sad, but those people really need you and you need them. That's why we always say, this is the Cole Brothers Circus family. The circus is a life to itself, and I hope that the American circus in its present state and in the state that it has been will always be here for you guys, for me, and for your kids. Thank you. To John Pugh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh.